Now, choosing the right uh, colors, the right color palette for your pattern can sometimes really give you a headache, but usually it's one of the most important uh, things to decide on. It's very essential. A well-considered color palette can uh, certainly elevate your design, but it can also destroy it. Um, it can set the mood of your pattern. It can make it more playful. It can make it more calm. It can also make it more suitable for some markets. Um, we will see a few examples on the next slides. So let's start with tip number one. Reduce your colors to maximum six colors whenever uh, you produce or create your pattern. What I keep seeing, especially with beginner artists, is that um, they get lost in too many colors on the color spectrum and they feel a little bit chaotic and all over the place. So the, really the tip number one that I can give you starting from today, I told you at the beginning in the getting started lesson that you can take from each section one piece of advice and you can choose. Actually, I should say that this one is non-negotiable, that this is something that you should try out because it will really be good for your portfolio, I believe, at least to test it out to uh, create the next pattern with a minimal color palette. It could be maximum six colors, but it could be even fewer. So reducing the number of your colors will usually result in a much cleaner outcome. It will make your pattern easy to understand, if it makes sense, uh, which will work really well for pattern design, for branding and packaging, for example. And then working with fewer colors will encourage you to shift your focus more to composition and the arrangement of your pattern motifs. Using fewer colors is also what uh, your potential client will or might want because it could be more cost effective, especially in print production. So working with limited colors is a good habit to develop from the very beginning. Patterns with fewer colors are often easier to reproduce accurately in print. Making sure that the final product matches the original design as close as possible. Tip number two, often overlooked, identify the mood of your color palette. Let me give you a few examples. Your colors could be playful and vibrant. Such combinations are really excellent for the kids market or for a playful uh, clothes line for teenagers. Your colors could also be vintage. They could, you know, evoke a feeling of nostalgia. Think about, for instance, the colors of the 60s or the 70s. They could be really fantastic for home decor and for bold fabric. Your color palette could also be mysterious and dark with darker and more moody tones of grays, purples and browns. It could be more fitting for some esoteric products or for cosmetics, maybe for some products for men. Your color palette could also be romantic. So it can include a lot of uh, pastel colors with pinks, creams and beige. Uh, super fitting for obviously more romantic or let's say feminine products for some romantic occasions for um, packaging, wrapping paper, wallpaper. There's actually so many applications that uh, you can think of. You could also choose very fresh colors with mint green, turquoise, vibrant yellows and blues. Such fresh colors, they give you kind of a kick. I think they would go very well with sports apparel and uh, some fitness products. Or again, uh, considering the mood of your colors, you may want uh, to design something much softer and delicate with pastel tones. This soft pastel color palette is really great for baby products and for the nursery. Now, when choosing your color palette, there are also some resources outside of the digital realm that can help you. For example, books. Maybe you have some books that don't even have to do anything with illustration. I remember back in the days I had a lot of albums that were about uh, bouquets and flower arrangements and you could just snap a photo uh, from this um, very artistic album and then you could import it to Procreate or Affinity and use that as your color palette. Um, I wanted to show you one of my most favorite books for uh, researching color palettes. It's called Palette Perfect by Laureen. I hope I pronounced her name uh, correctly. Uh, Wager. I will include um, this title of uh, this book in my references in the class description. This book, I found it on the German Amazon 
is really just a treasure of color palettes and it's structured in a very very funny way because it is actually structured by the mood so this is what we were uh, discussing previously so in the table of contents you will see that um, this book has some examples of natural uh, color palettes uh, color palettes connected to some curiosity dreamy magical there's also fresh some fresh colors solitude that's a nice mood solitude romantic mysterious retro tranquility playful delicate so it's much more than i included on my slides trendy nostalgia and lush so there's a whole bunch of like even emotions that uh, colors can evoke some of them can be more elegant and more sophisticated so when you get a project you will most probably get a, like a creative brief from your client and they will describe uh, and tell you the the purpose of the design why they need um, a pattern or a pattern collection and they might include some keywords that refer to the mood of your colors and um, such resources are really really super helpful and the last tip that I wanted to give you for this lesson is to look out for signature color palettes. For example, I had a phase uh, when my color palette was a little bit more rustic and earthy. Uh, there was a lot of dull pinks and purples and some pastel greens. It was a little bit beigey. Then my daughter was born, so it was a completely different mood in my life, right? And I rediscovered the power of um, happy colors. And it was quite a natural process for me that my art started to be more bold and vibrant, which gave me a lot of joy because that was also the time of my life where I felt a lot of joy because I had my first baby. And even currently, when you just have a look at my website portfolio or on my Instagram, I have a few favorite colors that I tend to use over and over again. Like there's a special type of blue or teal or peachy orange uh, that I like to use over and over again in my art. And not just in pattern design, but also in my uh, picture book illustrations. To finish off this lesson, I wanted to show you how other artists are using colors in their patterns. So I reached out to some of my uh, favorite pattern designers on Instagram. And with their permission, I wanted to show you their patterns, their art and what they have to say about using color uh, and color palettes in their work. Our first artist is Elena. I really love her color palette. In me personally, I instantly think about the mood. It evokes those feelings of calm and warm and very cozy. I think her patterns look especially good on uh, products for children or for babies and they would be super fitting also in a nursery and I am sure that her patterns can be really popular uh, with those people who like to saw themselves uh, and they look really really great on bold fabric as well. So this is what Elena says about using color in her work. Finding your signature colors can be a bit stressful. Just give yourself time to experiment. My color choices vary with seasons and that's okay if it's intentional. Typically, my patterns include bright spot colors, warm neutrals, and something cute. So here you already notice that she herself is aware that she does have some colors that she really uh, likes coming back to. Maybe they became her signature colors even. And then she continues to say, it's helpful to begin by noting the colors you don't like. For me, I avoid greens, yellows, violets, and pinks. And here's advice from my color theory teacher. Check your outfit to discover your color preference. I have lots of blues and warm neutrals, which I often use in my illustrations and patterns after some color experiments. I have also summarized the tips that uh, Elena wants to give us. So first of all, give yourself time to experiment. Like I said, sometimes you really just have to produce one pattern after another to gain more experience. And then you may intentionally choose colors depending on the seasons. I also notice that whenever there's the fall season, I uh, kind of adapt to what I see on Instagram as well. And I start to reach out for more uh, seasonal color palettes with browns and with oranges. And here, one of my favorite tips, check your outfits to discover your color preferences. 
Another great artist is Mary Lou and I also wanted to present her uh, in this lesson. I really adore her designs. They're super sweet and cute and I need to find out where I can buy them for my own daughter. And she was also very kind uh, to um, gift me some time and to share uh, some of her tips on using color in her work. So this is what she's saying. Working with color is a big part of my practice and I spend a lot of time building up good color harmonies. I like to work with as large a palette as possible while maintaining a balance and comforting composition. So here you'll notice that she's also saying again, I spend a lot of time. This is something that you cannot probably <laughs> develop overnight. It just comes with time and with your experience drawing and making one path pattern after another. I often work on the palettes first, then adjust the colors according to the shapes in each image. I have many favorite colors such as yellow, green, blue and pink. So again, she's very aware of which of the colors are her favorites and I bet she has some um, ready-made color palettes uh, saved up and ready to go every time she designs something new. And here's a summary of her tips. Start your project with a color palette that inspires you. And then take some time to build your palettes and do not rush it. Identify your recurring favorite colors, which, as we know, might with time become your signature colors. Next, we have Carly, who is again featured in my course because I can't stop looking at her designs. They're so beautiful and full of joy. Um, so you see, automatically, I didn't even plan it. It's not scripted. <laughs> I said that her patterns, they evoke in me a sense of joy because they're so bold and um, happy. I instantly think about the mood. And this is what she shared with me when I asked her about using color and color palettes in her work. I love color. Yeah. <laughs> For me, it's the most important part of my work. I have been collecting color palettes or even just images with pleasant color combinations over on Pinterest for many years. So now I have a big library to draw inspiration from. I like to use dreamy palettes of pinks, blues and purples in lots of vibrant hues. And I will stick to the same palette for quite some time so that my work has a cohesive look. Recently I have been inspired by the palettes of Georgia O'Keeffe. Her colors are so magical. And now here is the summary of uh, tips and recommendations from Carly. Collect color palettes and store them, for example, on Pinterest. I'm also a fan of Pinterest, by the way, and I have so many artboards by now. And then I use it quite actively whenever working on a new pattern or a new illustration. Stick to one color palette for a period of time so that you create a body of work that looks cohesive. And finally, seek inspiration looking at famous artists from art history. I really love this last piece of advice. Next, we have Megan who has drawn my attention to her artwork through her use of color precisely. I found her on Instagram and she is, in my uh, opinion, extremely good at uh, showcasing her artwork. And I really love her color combinations, so I asked her to participate and to share her pieces of advice on using color and color palettes in her work. So this is what she's saying. The first thing I do when starting a new pattern or illustration is choose the color palette. I love to use limited palettes, usually three to six colors, plus black and white. That pushes me to find creative ways to use the colors while also giving me a guideline from the start. I end up working faster and the end result is more interesting. And here's a summary of her recommendations for the use of color. Her first piece of advice is start by choosing your colors at the beginning of your project. And I really have to agree with that, that sometimes I am inspired to create a pattern when I first see a very uh, beautiful color palette, not the other way around. And then, very importantly, use a limited color palette of max uh, three to six colors, and I really couldn't agree more. Thank you so much to all those uh, talented pattern designers for participating and for sharing your experience and your tips. Uh, here are their Instagram uh, handles. 
so that you can visit their accounts and give them a follow or just admire their beautiful artworks. So how does that look in practice and how did it look for me when I was choosing my signature color palettes? You will start to notice uh, as you create one pattern after another that you keep coming back to some colors. You can also take notes, maybe you have some artistic journal where uh, you take notes about uh, your inspirations, maybe you have a sketchbook um, where you can draw with paints or with colored pencils, but you can also cut out some um, beautiful color combinations from magazines and keep them in this notebook uh, for safekeeping, so to say. So you start to identify at least this one and then the second color that you keep using over and over again, and they just become part of your repertoire on a daily basis. Next, you go further and you include those colors not only in your creative process, but also in your branding process. So maybe you include those colors in your uh, brand logo and perhaps you also take them into consideration when building your portfolio website. I always have my brand colors saved up in the software that I'm using. So I have them both in Procreate for sketching and also in Affinity Designer. I have a, this one color palette that I just call branding and it actually did change. Like I used to have a more bluish bright brand identity last year and now it's getting a little bit more peachy again. So um, when you develop your signature brand color palette, it doesn't mean that it's set in stone. It can actually also evolve with you as an artist and you can, you can of course keep changing it. And think about one of the other aspects that I mentioned when talking about color. Think about the mood. My signature colors are very happy and very vibrant. It might have something to do with my origin. I originally come from Poland where the reality is a little bit gray. It's not Spain, it's not Mexico, it's not, it's not sunny all the time. Uh, you know, I lived in those post-communist blocks. It was a lot of gray and a lot of brown. And I think naturally now I want a little bit more color. Like even if the environment is gray and a little bit blah, um, I want more color in life. And this is also part of my um, like artist statement that I can also include on my website that I want to bring more color and happiness onto the client's products to spread a little bit more happiness and a bit more optimism. So your signature colors, your favorite colors, they can become your signature colors. They can evoke a certain mood that is also part of who you are as an artist and it's a part of your brand identity. So what about you? Take a sheet of paper or take your journal and um, write a few thoughts after watching this lesson. Do you know what you like? Uh, do you know the mood of your patterns or your illustrations in general? Take a few notes, just write them on a sheet of paper to gain a little bit more clarity. I hope that this lesson was helpful.